hi guys i'm back welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here i'm the digital empress hello i'm your new fave cybersecurity informant about the cybersecurity field and you should subscribe if you want more information about how to get in the field about topics and concepts in the field and how to be the best security professional you can be and today we're going to be talking about why traditional cybersecurity solutions fail to protect against advanced malware. This is basically a mini series on an introduction to everything you should know before you should get into the cybersecurity field and you become a security professional in cybersecurity. This is the book that I'm pulling most of this information from. This is basically for beginners to get in the mindset of what malware is, how to protect against it, how attackers carry out attacks on an organization or a network and how you can as a cybersecurity professional protect against these attacks and how to implement updated cybersecurity solutions to counteract these attacks so most of the stuff and the strategies discussed in this book was things that i was using as a corporate cybersecurity engineer on the job these are things that and concepts that I had to know and that I used and implemented on the job. And this book has also helped me to fill in some of my knowledge gaps and learn new things and to come on here and teach you guys these things so that you can get in the mindset of being in the field of cybersecurity and what to expect. In chapter three, we're basically going to be focusing on legacy port firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, and other security tools um, that are that are or can be ineffective when you're fighting against advanced malware attacks. Today, you're going to get a better understanding of tracking the path of malware and exploits, discovering the hidden nature of malware or advanced malware, hashing out signature-based detection, taking aim at targeted malware and what that is, working with traditional security solutions, and understanding the need for a fully integrated security solution. So as I'm explaining the concepts throughout this book, I really want you guys to put yourself into the mind of a security professional and really think about what I'm saying if you were on the job and how you'd handle certain issues in a company or for yourself. All right, let's get right into the video and talk about why traditional cybersecurity solutions fail to prevent advanced malware. So back in the day, cyber criminals usually used to spread malware via email because that's what most people were using back in the day we didn't have all these like advanced applications they did have applications but it wasn't as many as we have today where they could use to hide themselves put in malware and be able to infiltrate a network so like i said they're now attacking and utilizing your fave applications to give you your own special malware, okay? They use everything from social media, Microsoft Office, file transfer apps, and instant messaging, okay? They use all of this to be able to carry out advanced malware, advanced persistent threats. And I think I've said this before in another video, nobody is safe. Nobody is safe from getting attacked, okay? You can get hacked on Twitter, you can get hacked on Facebook, which we, <laughs> We know. You can get attacked through Gmail. Uh, you can get attacked through Slack. Like it just all depends on how much information you're sharing and who you come across. My Twitter account has been hacked before, like back in the day. I think it was like 2016, 2015 or 16. Was it 2015, 16? No, it was like 2012 or 13. I had a Twitter back then and it got hacked. And like I said, I didn't know anything about cybersecurity, about security um, before this. And I remember trying to log into my account one day and I couldn't. I went to go look in at my account, like who had it and somebody else had it. And I remember like reporting to Twitter, like somebody hacked my account and I got my account back. But just going through that and seeing like somebody had literally hacked my Twitter account, I was like, 
oh my god but i think it's from what we're gonna discuss in this i think somebody sent me a link or i clicked on something and i logged into a twitter phishing email and gave up my credentials somehow or i logged into some type of like twitter application back then that to use to like gain followers and they got my credentials and they took over my account like i said nobody is safe i wasn't even safe but now i'm safe so to help combat this you know hackers and attackers using applications to exploit users communication is needed like elite communication is needed for these cybersecurity solutions to be able to help defend and protect against these attacks and security solutions need to communicate effectively with other security solutions so that they're able to you know bounce information back and forth to bounce remediation back and forth get these attacks quarantined assigned with a fix and assign with the signature so that everyone else can know that this attack is out there, that this is happening and how to protect against it. Usually in the job, you'll notice as a help desk, system administrator, security professional, you're going to have users that want to use specific applications. And sometimes these applications are not applications that were initially approved as legitimate applications that users are approved to use okay so there's we're going to talk about this later but i'm going to get into it a little bit now hr security the it security team or just it in general and executive managers they all get together and they discuss the types of applications that should be approved or not approved on the network and sometimes, I remember this all the time, users would come and they'd ask, oh, can I download this application so that I can edit this PDF some type of way? Or can I download this application to be able to communicate with this person over at this company? Or can I download this application to be able to make certain edits to a file? And sometimes like we'll take a look at the application to see if it's legitimate, but sometimes you may not know, like a lot of these applications are designed to get around firewall rules. And what is that welcome in? This is not the only way that malware can get in and malware can like hide on a network or on a system. They have multiple other ways that malware hides itself from getting detected by security professionals. Some of those methods are sitting on non-standard standard ports or port hopping, masking behind SSL, TSL, TLS encryption, which is one of our fave defaults for social media, Gmail, Twitter, Facebook. Tunneling, which allows attackers to disguise their true intentions and communications as legitimate services or apps to get past organizations' per perimeter security solutions. Also through encoding and obfuscation. If you guys have not seen my video on how to obfuscate data, you can watch it here. It's basically the process of hiding data and like pictures and behind files and you know, just not, just being hidden. So malware uses obfuscation to hide itself behind a legitimate app or a legitimate file to get itself onto the network and not detect it. This also helps attackers, you know, continue to be hidden because they're obfuscating everything that they do, which I'm I'm pretty sure obfuscation is a way of like clearing their tracks. I used to think about like how do these cyber criminals get caught or they not get caught and like what is the process that they use to like cover their trails while they're like you know attacking or whatever um it's obfuscation they're basically hiding and clearing up everything that they use and making sure that every trail that they leave they're cleaning up you know they're not leaving any type of trail behind to trace them to who they actually are if you get caught uh during like an attack or during a hack you're 
basically not covering your trails and you don't have good um, practices and obfuscation. You're not, you don't know how to hide your data properly. You don't know how to hide what you're doing properly. And that's how they get caught. When you become a security professional, you'll basically be able to take samples of the malware, the advanced malware that comes into an organization, into an application, and study and analyze what it really does to be able to put a signature on the malware, which is something that um, malware researchers do. Um, I think I want to eventually get into analyzing malware. I don't know if you guys know Malware Unicorn. Um, she's really big on Twitter and in the cybersecurity world. Analyzing and collecting samples of the malware can also be a weakness. And you're probably like, how the heck can this be a weakness? It's because of the amount of time that it takes and the high cost that it causes to the organization. You have to basically get a hold of the malware, which takes time. You have to analyze the malware, which takes time. You have to sit there and study how it works, what it's doing to be able to assign a signature to it, to assign a fix to it, and to be able to go in the process of cleaning it up, protecting against it, ensuring that you know all the devices have the update or the you know the remediation for it all of this takes time and while you're doing that like while you're analyzing and studying the malware and trying to provide a fix the network could still be getting hit by the malware i know i'm like being too <laughs> the malware could be going through messing with people's data you know stealing data taking data and costing the organization its data and money that's how it's a weakness because you as a security professional you're kind of put in a sticky situation where it's like you could be analyzing what's going on and it could be a zero day that nobody has a fix for and we won't know what's going on or how it works until we get a sample of it and see what it's doing to be able to put out a fix that's why a lot of traditional ways that we you know all right so now that we know that we're gonna move on to targeted malware targeted malware uses polymorphism polymorphism is hand in, goes hand in hand with like multifunctionality malware so polymorphism is also like a type of obfuscation it's just to keep changing itself like it keeps changing itself and in this case of targeted malware um as far as like hash based signatures it's getting the malware is designed to keep changing the signature to keep changing the signature to keep it from getting detected on the network this is basically how attackers exploit hash based signatures they use polymorphism to keep from getting detected so that the malware can keep you know floating through the network and doing what it needs to do to attack and to get the data get the money get whatever it needs to do we're gonna go back in the day again so back in the day <laughs> hackers or attackers cyber criminals to be specific would distribute as much malware as they could to as many people as they could right to get data to get money to get whatever they need it. Okay, so remember when I said that back in the day, earlier in the video, that a lot of attackers would spread uh, malware with email? Well, they were spreading the malware to everyone, but targeted malware is just like it sounds. It's targeted for a specific user. Cyber criminals today don't have to like spread you know a bunch of malware to a bunch of people to see how many people they can attack and see how much data they can get like we discussed in the cyber attack life cycle they can use reconnaissance on a specific user a target organization gather all that information to be able to use it to be able to attack a certain Target. They don't have to infect a lot of people today, even though phishing is still like a way of, you know, attacking a bunch of people. There's still a bunch of phishing emails like I can look at and be like, oh, they definitely like sent this out to a bunch of people. Because of this, they don't need a bunch of systems to be able to carry out an attack. They could just infect one 
one system, one system on the network can mess up everything, okay? They don't they don't need five, 10 computers. They don't need five, 10 people. They just need one, one computer to be able to get in, elevate their privileges and let them run wild. If you guys do not know about Stuxnet, I'm gonna put you on game right now because some point in your schooling journey or your career journey, you're going to hear about Stuxnet. It's going to be brought up. It's going to be talked about. You might, you know, have a conversation about it. And if you don't know about Stuxnet, okay, somebody who knows about it is probably gonna talk your ear off about it. And some people that, you know, are the wannabe tech gods are gonna, you know, clown, try and clown you for not knowing what Stuxnet is. But I want to tell you now to go and study Stuxnet, find out what it is. It was a big thing when it happened. It's a good example to know how targeted advanced malware works because let me tell y'all, the way they designed the malware for Stuxnet, they could have blown a lot of people up because um, if I remember correctly, they targeted the nuclear program in Iran. What does nuclear mean? Cyber criminals can literally design a program, a, a piece of malware, a piece of code that could go and like set off bombs. Like what? <laughs> so now we're gonna get into why a lot of traditional security controls are ineffective when it comes to advanced malware. Like you're not going to be able to track something like Stuxnet with like a basic firewall and basic firewall rules. You're not going to be able to really protect and prevent things like that and detect it if you're working with traditional security controls, traditional security practices. It's just not gonna work, okay? You're gonna have to take it to the next level. Firewalls, intrusion prevention, proxies, endpoint protection, virtual and cloud protection, these are all things that we usually put in place to protect our networks, to protect our home network, to protect our organization that we're employed at. These are all things that we use that need to be taken into consideration when dealing with these very big advanced attacks. As we get older, as we continue to just go through life, security technology is going to constantly have to be evolving and constantly have to be updated. And that's why I say this field, you can never get bored in if you're really interested in getting in this field because malware is just gonna keep getting better and more advanced and more coordinated. And security tools and security solutions have to keep advancing and evolving with it because if you try and keep things the same and you try and keep things at a very traditional level, like they're saying, um, you're going to be behind and you're constantly going to be susceptible to attacks because you're not staying on top of your game. So you can read more about how those traditional controls, like the pros and cons of each and how to protect your organization, who you're working for, your home network, even if you have one, a business, a personal business, how you can keep them updated. And you can check those out on my website in my notes and you can discuss them there on the blog or we could discuss it here in the comments so you now know after watching this video and possibly reading the notes of how to track malware and exploits the path of them in that case discovering the hidden nature of malware and how to like analyze that and collect samples hashing out signature based detection and how attackers use polymorphism to you know, exploit that weakness. I'm taking an aim at targeted malware and how targeted malware works. Traditional security solutions and how to keep them updated and how too many of them can be a weakness. And understanding the f need for fully integrated security solution. So comment down below if you guys learned anything from this episode or if you learned anything new or have any questions, let's talk about it in the comments below. You can also talk about it in the notes, in the description box, in the comment section on my blog post. We can have a discussion there if you guys have any questions or wanna just talk about any concepts that we about here i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like comment share and subscribe for more cybersecurity content and i will see you guys in the next episode